Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here is a little bit of an information board relating to one of my worm bins. All these systems you see over here in buckets and in bins, those are all worm composting systems. The one that I'm working on today is a 40 day old system that's got red wigglers in it. And this one's kind of running a weird sort of test bedding um, scenario here. So uh, a lot of times you use, you know, cocoa core or leaves or shredded paper, cardboard, whatever as bedding for your worm bins. Here I was curious to see how certain unusual materials, in one case we put a bunch of old uh, used twine into the um, feeding area as the bedding. And then on the following feeding, we came in here with some cotton items. There was um, socks and towel. And the system's now been sitting around for 12 days since that feeding. It seemed due for uh, a quick check-in so yeah basically it's at 18 days before being fed what I'm calling number two since the bin was pre-fed the twine went in then so the twine goes back 22 days and then the cotton goes back 12 days not expecting a lot of wear or signs of decomposition in the bedding materials that we're testing with but it is due for a feeding I believe and maybe we'll get a little peek at some of the progress but I wouldn't hold my breath for now, it's just feeding, basically. So, uh, the 1599 refers to the uh, the size of the population estimated by, you know, my guess at how many worms are in there, as well as the guesses of all the viewers, all averaged together. So, kind of an interesting number. So, let's get this thing up on the shelf and get to feeding these little guys. So now, don't expect any sort of like really scientific approach to any of this testing. It's just sort of uh, very ad hoc and casual. But I'll try to explain, um, the twine was twine that I use out in the garden. It's twine that's always pretty much been outside for the past couple of years, so it's also very UV. Uh, what's the right word for it? Basically it was, you know, getting pounded by the sun for years by just sitting outside. So I just bought, a, bought in a bunch of it, it was probably enough to hold in a nice big um, bundle in your hand. And I believe that it went right down the middle as the bedding for a feeding that went down the middle. And then I think we decided we're going to try to allocate two more spaces for two more tests. And then the cotton came in where we have this indicator showing where we last fed. I don't even remember what the feedings consisted of. But I believe they were materials that were meant to really um, draw the worms in and get them going. But I think instead of switching to like a third material to test with, I didn't want to really take this any further. I'm satisfied with the test that's happening here with the twine and the cotton. So my thought was to um, take the twine, which I believe is down in the middle, and relocate it just over to this side. And then we'll kind of get into this back and forth thing where we'll only have two different things being kind of evaluated, you know, twine and cotton. Then we'll get a little bit of an insight into how each does in a worm bin. So here you can see, I don't know about yanking the whole thing out, I guess we'll probably have to, right? So I guess the nice thing about it is that I just, you know, have, it's a bunch of, you know, pieces that are, uh, I don't know, probably about a couple meters long, you know, they're pretty long pieces and they were wrapped up so that I can um, unwind it as I lower my tomato plant, lower and leaning with kind of a tomato hook setup. So. That's the reason they were outside. It feels like it keeps going, so maybe we'll excavate to get the um, the material out. This is what we're going to use as the bedding for today's feeding. So the cotton will remain in the side that it's on, and then the, the twine will become the other side. So let's try to extract our our bedding here. So let's uh let's also use this as an opportunity to see how progress has been made in a in a feeding area. 22 days in progress. After 22 days, if I was, especially if I was putting foods in here that were meant to really get them going, then there might not be any leftovers. And that's kind of what I'm seeing here. I see plenty of twine, but I don't see any food, really. So that's a pretty good bundle, right? That's a lot of material right there. And I guess there's probably some food scraps in here because the worms are still hanging out inside of it. But... I'm glad to see that they're not put off by this stuff, and I'm glad to see all the food that was placed around it is gone. And I'm, um, I'm thinking this might be one of the last times we actually get this interactive with this material, because the idea I think here was not to extract it each time and get 
like a really close look at it. It was probably more um, to kind of let it be, you know, and see what occurs on its own. I guess what I'm testing, at least in my book, I like to try to see what happens on its own. So I try not to break stuff up if I'm really interested in seeing, you know, how, how it breaks down on its own when it's just that material up against the inhabitants of the worm bin. We got most of it. There might be a little shred here or there. The stuff breaks so readily. I mean, you, you know, normally a piece of twine is so tough, you try to break it, it's not going anywhere. But this stuff, you can snap it quite easily. So now these are um, these worms go back to my, I think it's what I had referred to as version 2 or revision 2 or something like that. 2.0 outdoor worm bin. <laughs> So what I'm kind of winding down now is version 3.0. I've got a migration of the 3.0 version, but the previous version of my outdoor worm bin, and these worm bins are not always religiously outdoor worm bins. A lot of times they get to come inside and take a little break from the cold during the winter. <laughs> so yeah, that's where these worms came from. And uh, there's a couple of them still hanging out there, but I'm, I'm guessing it's probably gonna be a greater number of worms over on the other side where we last mm -hmm. fed. Because maybe even by the last time we were in here, possibly there were limited numbers of leftovers in this twine. So they're probably eating whatever it is I gave them with the cotton, with the socks, and with the towel. So on this side, you know, no, no food's been put in here other than maybe some that might have made its way in there uh, during the build of the bin, going way back when. So we're going to um, we're going to use this as our spot to feed let's get our twine in there but before I um before I head upstairs to get them something to eat I haven't even bought anything down here to feed them and it'll be frozen I guess when I bring it down here because I store all my worm foods in the freezer so hopefully these worms inhabiting the twine will kind of leave <laughs> otherwise they're going to get some cold stuff placed on top of them so that's a pretty nice little platform for today's feeding but before we tend to that I think let's um let's take a peek at how the cotton's coming along but you gotta admit that's I don't know something that the worms appear to enjoy hanging out in or at least that's what it looks like to me if you're seeing something different there please chime in I'd like to hear your thoughts so now here there's um the white is the sock and the the colorful material is the the towel so we put them all in here, kind of there's more sock, and there was one piece of sock. Oh man, that's weird. <laughs> there's like this, oh okay, this is an orange peel or a lemon peel, some sort of citrus peel. And it's weird, the, the fungus or you know mold that grows on this stuff is really kind of light and dusty. As soon as you touch the thing, it starts to lift off the material so that's why I'm kind of backing off I don't know if I sound any different maybe I'm a little further from the microphone here because I'm, I'm doing this with outstretched arms trying not to breathe that stuff in but um I guess here too we're kind of doing a upend and I don't think it's a big deal it probably doesn't make too much of a problem I'm just trying to see if besides the citrus I guess obviously there's also what remains of some cantaloupe melon it's almost see-through what remains of the rind pretty cool and I think what I'm seeing down here also is probably coffee all this darker colored stuff it's not castings there's definitely a visible difference I don't know if it shows on the camera but you can pick it out so I guess you know towel sock but on this on the side of the sock there's the part that doesn't um, have any elastic material in it and then there's the part that does so I cut them apart from one another so that you know, if this stuff has some sort some sort of material in it that makes it springy and uh, elastic, then it might be something that the worms don't consume, and then there might be leftovers. So I'll be curious to see what those look like. But I figured if these are going to break down, then let's whatever separate them. I probably could have just left them all together, but I like smaller chunks down here better than big chunks. And as far as leftovers go, not much. It's surprising to see this piece right here piece of cantaloupe with a little bit of, of the meaty part of the melon remaining on it as well as a banana peel it's got a lot of kind of juicy appearance to it with a little bit of the coffee stuck to it so all right I, I think we'll just kind of slide all these materials right back down where they were and let the fun continue <laughs> 
so it's interesting. I hope the um, hope the worms enjoy this as their bedding material slash carbon food source. But I'm not limiting it to only that. So obviously they're you know they're able to go eat shred paper and lay leaves and everything else that makes up my you know my typical everyday bedding. And I, and I wasn't planning on just supplementing bedding in these feedings with only these types of materials. I'm just you know going to bring my everyday prepared you know bedding into into the game, or if I've got coffee filters that need to be used, then those are all fair game as well. So uh, let's just get this covered up, and we're we're done checking in on the cotton. Let's get back to the twine. I've got to take a short break to bring some food down here for them. So I'm going to just make sure we've got all these leftovers. I guess some of these leftovers really came from the other side, right? <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter it's not a test about the food it's a test about the bedding right I just want to make sure this stuff is kind of sitting low so that I'll be able to cover thoroughly but I need to shove upstairs for a moment so we'll pause now and then uh, when I return we're gonna give them some yummy food <laughs> alright so I'll be back what I found for these little guys is something that I believe is gonna be pretty well received this is uh, cucumber peels for the most part, but obviously a few cucumbers that were already a little bit past their prime didn't make it into the dish ultimately. So they've made their way down into my worm food collection. And there's a lot of frost in here too, so this is going to bring with it a little bit of moisture. So let's see, what else do we need? Not much, right? I guess we're going to supplement with some bedding as well as some grit. And the grit that I use is this pulverized eggshell particles. So, let's see, I think as far as giving the, the, uh, the twine maximum exposure to the food is a good idea. So maybe we'll actually supplement with bedding after we've placed in the, uh, the food. So why don't we start with the cucumber. I wasn't sure about the amount of this stuff, because if, you know, if you know cucumber, once these things right here, for example, they thaw out, these are going to pretty much just melt away. These are practically all water. And a lot of this is, you know, purely water, ice. That'll all just drip to the bottom. That should be fine. There's definitely peels in here, but not a, not a whole lot. I'm not sure if 12 days is going to be a, a good idea. Next time we might want to come back in here a little sooner. I've got a little annotation I've been keeping in some of my records now to sort of tell future self of mine that I've got an idea as to when the system should um, be checked in on again. So in some cases I'm trying to keep the specific schedules, like 10 day intervals on certain things. Other places I've been um, just putting myself into sort of a range, telling myself that, hey, you know, somewhere between the next, you know, 10 or 15 days it would be good to check in on this thing where, oh boy, that was a lot of food. We better, you know, leave this be for two weeks before we come in here again. So I'm gonna put this aside, but we're gonna, I think, utilize these coffee filters as well as the one that had been placed on top of the the feeding zone earlier it's right here this one's already been in the bin for some time now so that's you know material that's already full of all the microbes and bacteria and stuff there's even some mold growing on there from that piece of citrus that was stuck to it <laughs> so I think this is a great thing to include with the feeding as well as some of my prepared bedding which I'm going to use to try to Kind of get this coffee mixed in with some of its surrounding materials. Some of it will drop down onto the food below. Some of it will stick to these pieces of leaves and cardboard. And I think we're coming up with a pretty nice looking feeding area here. You know what? Let's. I guess we'll just grab one of one of these. I'll save the other one for later use. Let me see about trying to help these pieces along a little bit by reducing their size. So yeah, cucumber's not going to last, that's for sure. But it's definitely going to bring with it a good amount of moisture. So this side's going to become popular if for no other reason than just for the moisture. Some of the lucky few that make their way here first are going to reap the benefits of having some yummy cucumber to nibble on. But I got a feeling that when we come back in here, this is just going to be sunken down <laughs> like a big ditch. So you know what? Before we leave here, why don't we include a little bit more of my prepared bedding. Usually I'll try to cover up with the surrounding materials. I guess we could do that a little bit here, but I'm already level for the most part. So we'll just sprinkle some of this old stuff here on top. A little familiar stuff that surface 
cruising worms will not be um, reluctant to you know crawl out onto to check it out and then maybe they'll dive down into into the yummy cucumber once they sense it's there or the moisture or whatever it is that they're you know attracted to maybe a little bit of both right so things look pretty good in here we'll do what we did last time mark where we last fed and now I think in about seven to ten days it'll be a, a good time to come back in here see how things are holding up because that cucumber is going to be gone and you know whatever leftovers of that banana and a couple pieces of citrus peel in there are left it's you know definitely not much over there either so it'll be due for a, a feeding over on the other side so that's it for our now 40 day old red wiggler worms doing a pretty good job in here as far as, as far as the uh kind of the castings that are already starting to show up as being mixed in with the uh the bedding Sometimes I'm not so sure because I don't always do a really clean separation of the worms from the material they're inhabiting when I launch them into a new environment. Some of those castings could have just come over, you know, when I launched the bin with the worms. So uh, I don't want to, you know, misrepresent the state of the bin. It might not be really as far as long, long as it appears that somehow, sometimes that's just the way I run the system. But either way, I think the worms look pretty happy and healthy in here. And I got a feeling that, you know, next time we come in here, they're going to be all over that twine. <laughs> then we're going to have to do something about getting them back over onto the cotton. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. I got a couple things I got to put away and take care of, but I'm not going to take up your time with that. I'm going to really quickly, before I go, just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye now.